Hey everybody, good evening. Sorry, I was just finishing up making my little post on my YouTube channels and everything, letting everybody know we are live. Although I do um set up the live notification um ahead of time so that everybody can receive the link. But I just want to make sure everybody knew I was going live. So how's everybody doing this evening? Hopefully all is well. It is the end of the weekend, but, but, <laughs> if you are like me, you have the day off tomorrow, which is New Year's Eve, and you have the day off Tuesday, which is New Year's Day, and then maybe, just maybe you got the day off the day after New Year's as well. Now, I'm off tomorrow, I'm off on New Year's, I'm off on Wednesday, I should have just took the whole week off <laughs> and quit playing. Just take the whole week off. But anywho, y'all know yesterday was my birthday. But since I had to work this morning um, bright and early, I just, you know, went to dinner, hung out with my friends for a little bit, and then came to work this morning. So tomorrow night is on and popping. I'm having a New Year's party, a birthday celebration all in one. So I might come at you live tomorrow night from, and it's a house party, you know, old school house party. So anyway, I might come live to you guys tomorrow night so you guys could hang out with me for a minute for my birthday. But anyway, I hope all is well. Everybody, please like the video on your way in. Please subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber and please share the link. Please, please, please share the link. We're going to be going over two episodes tonight. <laughs> I, I, I'm sorry. Last week was a busy week. It was the holiday. You know how it is. Things happen. So I missed the episode. Um, I missed episode four, which was called Triggers of Love and Hip Hop New York. And then I caught up on that one. And I caught up on episode five, which is Gwinners and Losers. So I'm going to try to make this as short as possible but y'all know how i do sometimes i get a little carried away so you know just bear with me bear with me and as usual if you have anything to say about the live about the characters about any scenes you know any questions please comment in the chat please also comment if you're watching, say hello, say hi, say what's up, say happy belated birthday to your girl, you know, just hit me up in the chat, don't be shy, <laughs> do not be shy. Now, let's get this party started. Um, Again, we're going over two episodes. Um, Episode four, at the beginning of that show, um, it was Mano and his girlfriend, and they were having a game night, you know, a fun night at their crib, like a lot of us do from time to time. And one thing for show, um, two things for certain, Mano loves the heck out of his girl. Her name is Maggie. Um, Maggie has a brother who is paralyzed. He's a diabetic, and... Mano loves her so much that he's willing to help take care of her brother. Um, he actually lives with them. Now, y'all know, as well as I do, a lot of men, a lot of brothers out here would not be down with that. And if they did allow, you know, their girl's brother to move in, they wouldn't be waiting on him hand and foot. They'd be like, that's your brother. That's your, get your brother. Change your brother. Carry him to the bathroom. You know, they ain't doing all that. A lot of guys out here 
just want to be with a girl and barely even want to be dealing with their kids. So, you know, I give him props, let the brother move in, you know, help his girl take care of the brother. But then um, Yandy, she shows up. And Yandy actually um, became friends with Maggie because of her close relationship with Mano. You know, they used to work, well, Mano used to be signed to a label and Yandy, she used to work there. She didn't exactly say what she did there, but, you know, she was just like, you know, we used to work together. Um, so because of her close relationship with Mano, um, she basically welcomed Maggie, you know, with open arms. But um, when Maggie was basically, um, okay, you know, she's going through this, uh, kind of like PTSD from her being shot. Um, so she's kind of like afraid and uneasy about getting back out there, you know, around large crowds of people after she was shot. And I mean, I don't blame her because me personally, I don't even know if I still be in a relationship with Mayno or any guy who has such a crime history, such a rap sheet. And then I met him. And shortly after I get shot up at an event that he put together, and I haven't really heard a lot about the shooting. So if y'all know a little more of the details, feel free to put it in the chat. But what I do recall is Mano saying that he thought that the bullet could have possibly been meant for him. And from him saying that, that led me to, you know, I don't know if I could possibly stay with him or not because i'm gonna just think that this dude is a straight up thug a straight up gangster i mean dudes go to jail all the time dudes get out of jail all the time they come back home they say they straight they gonna do right but for her to get shot at one of his events after he was released you know love will make you stick through all kinds of adversities though <laughs> So, you know, she's thinking in there, you know, trying to make it work with him. So, you know, I give her credit for that. But then Joe Button and his girl, Sin, shows up, you know, with their cute little adorable baby. And Mano was having like a moment with him. Um, He was kind of like just bringing him up to speed on everything that he's been going through from trying to help Matt, trying to help Maddie, you know, cope with her PTSD. His mother's health complications, you know, her health is declining. His brother, he's now in the feds where Mano just was. And him trying to, you know, financially make sure he takes care of everybody in his family or make sure he can take care of everybody in his family. Um, I always say it as far as these celebrities out here. Um, a lot of people look up to them like idols sometimes. When if you take the money away, they generally most likely are going through the same everyday crap that we go through. Um, take away the money and bring them down to our level. And sometimes they doing worse off than we are. So, you know, don't always look at these celebs like, hey, they got money, they living a the life, they got nice cars and mansions and all that on the hills. Sometimes they life down to the, you know, down to it. Is worse than ours. But then Safari, um, who's been on every love and hip hop platform there is, he was um seeing they showed him at his little barbecue. Um, it was Nia Lee, uh Jaque, and he's teasing Jaque because <laughs> Jaque is trying to get his girl back, um, Kyan. And I don't know why it's funny. <laughs> Her name is spelled, I think it's K A. Y-A-N-N-E. But when I was taking down my notes, I spelled it like the seasoning. <laughs> Don't judge me. <laughs> I spelled it just like the seasoning. I was like, C-A-Y. <laughs> but anyway, John Quay, he done posted a throwback pic of him and her on his IG. Now, mind you, he blocked the girl first. He blocked her. They broke up. He was cheating on her. And then... He start posting pics about her. Like, how you gonna block the girl? And then start posting pics about her, talking about, I wish, you know, I wish, I wish upon a fallen star that we could be back together and everything could be the way it is. Um, of course, it got back to her. And she's kind of you like confused, like, what's up with that? You are you just clout chasing? And when she came to the barbecue, she had no idea that he was gonna be there. But because of the fact that he posted that um, on the IG. 
Safari was thinking, you know what? He's still really feeling his girl. And if he really serious, I'm going to bring her to the barbecue. And maybe they can hash things out and work things out and he can talk to her. It didn't quite work out that way. <laughs> it didn't quite work out that way. When she got there, I mean, you can just tell from her whole demeanor, the expression on her face. She was like, what's good? What do you want? He approached her like, she's like, what do you want? Just say what you got to say, Clark, so I can go get my hot dog off the grill, go get my bun, <laughs> and make me something to eat, because she wasn't trying to kick it with him like that, but he basically told her, you know what, he posted that post because he's trying to get back in like Flynn. Um, she don't quite believe him. She don't quite believe him. Um... It didn't really look like he was too sincere either. And she think he was just, you know, clout chasing. She might be right. She might be right. I mean, she spazzed out on him just going off. And then while she was going off on him, she started throwing out these other accusations. And I'm like, what the heck? She starts, you know, alleging that he has been trying to take credit for the writing, the creativity um, of Safari's new song. Remember that song? I think that was last season. <laughs> that song, it was called We Are Stronger. And I'm like, okay, she's trying to make it seem like he's an opportunist. I'm like, hmm, you know, that could be the case. It's a lot of them that be on these shows. They don't be doing nothing. I don't even know why half the people be on these celebrity shows in the first place. Some of them be, you know, they got music out there. They doing something in the industry. But some of them, it just seems like they just there hanging around, you know, trying to hope something could happen. But anyway, anyway, I already have forgot all about that song. So I, it don't even matter who wrote the song, who produced the song, <laughs> who's getting credits for the song. Because I don't even remember, did that thing even hit like the radio stations? I don't know. So I don't even know if it really matters who wrote the song or not. But um, as far as Mano and his girl, back to them, um, as far as him and Maggie, um, I think Mano's heart was in the right place, you know, when he made plans for him and his girl to attend an event, you know, to try to help her with her PTSD. But I didn't think, and y'all, 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 you know, let me know how y'all feel about this. But as far as him trying to um make her take baby steps or try to like persuade her to you know get back out there a boxing event something so aggressive like two guys in a boxing ring banging each other's heads out blood squirting everywhere black eyes i mean bloody noses he couldn't come up with something else. <laughs> I mean, he couldn't wean her back in a little better than that. I mean, okay, I I want to say maybe like lawns and gardens event. <laughs> you know, a lawns and gardens event. You know, you go there, you pick out some rocks, some plants. You know, it's all quiet and serene. They got water flowing from the waterfalls and. You know, people up there trying to help you. You know, decorate your lawns and gardens. A boxing event? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think that was quite the type of event that he could have, you know, he should have chosen. But anywho, when she found out, you could just tell she was really nervous. She was unsure, you know, about the event. And I don't blame her. Not one bit. Um, Her bro, though, he was like, I think you really need, now mind you, her bro, he's paralyzed from the waist down. Um, he's diabetic. He needs care, like 24-7. He needs care. He's telling his sis, you know what, sis? I really think you need to take a chance, face your paranoia, face your fears, and stop continuing to restrict herself from life. From living her life. And I think he probably gave her the best advice coming from somebody who's paralyzed. When somebody who's paralyzed, who is not purposely restricting themselves from living life, it's just what it is with them. 
they ain't got no choice unless God sends them a big old miracle and they just get up and walk one day like Lazarus, just rise up. Um, they they restricted to a chair, to that wheelchair or to a bed. So I think that was the best advice that he gave her. You know what? Get up. You know, be free. Face your fears. You know, it'll be okay. But um, and as far as her, you know, she's dealing with PTSD. I think that's a good message for everybody. Don't be scared to take chances. Live your life day to day. Just go out there in the world and make it do what it do. But then she realized when they was driving around, you know, she realized that he had made a change of plans and actually brought her back to the exact location where she was shot. Um, I didn't know what to expect from Maggie. But when she started crying, I thought that she wasn't going to be able to handle it. Um, then she started walking away. And I was like, where is she going? She was like, I just need a moment. She started walking away. I'm like, where is she going? And she's on her phone, on the phone, making a phone call. And I'm like, who is she calling? It turned out it was her brother. I don't know what he said to her on the phone. She was crying. She was talking. Um, Mano was trying to get her into the establishment. I don't know if it, I can't remember if it was a club or, uh, I, I don't know, but I think it was a club. But then, you know, she walked off, talked to her brother Julius and whatever he said, it was enough comfort for her to go into that building with Mano. But I mean, I can't imagine how she was feeling at that time. And these things happen everywhere. I mean, churches, schools, hospitals, concerts. I mean, everywhere. But, you know, she was able to face her fears and, you know, went back to that place of pain, which was inside that club. So <sighs> I really hope she gets through that because that is that is something, you know, just you just don't expect to go somewhere and get shot. When you out kicking it and partying or at church praying, you just don't, you know, expect that kind of stuff. But anywho, um, Yandy. Now, uh, <laughs> I don't quite know what she was thinking when she invited Maggie, Juju. I love me some Juju. I, I don't know why. I don't know why, but I love me some Juju. Always have. But she invited Juju and Anais all to the beach for drinks and cocktails, shrimps. Um, Juju immediately told Yandy when she walked up, I ain't for no mess because you saw what happened the episode before when they was at Jonathan's party. Everybody was arguing with everybody. Everybody went home pissed. Everybody was beefing all the he say, she say. So Juju was like, I, I, hey, hey, you know, the, the, the view is great, but I ain't here for no mess. Um, and then Anaya strolled over. <laughs> I was like, okay, here comes the mess. <laughs> here comes the mess. Anaya was like, hey, Juju. You know how nice we, hey, Juju. <laughs> and she just looked away like, y'all hear something? Y'all hear something? She didn't get hurt. No time. <laughs> no acknowledgement. But then um, Yandy and Maggie just got up and left them there, you know, so they can, of course, talk and try to hash things out. Um, Anaya, she apologized to Juju, but she did make a lot of sense when she was like, um, I don't know if Jonathan, you know, the reason why we fighting, I don't know if it's because of Jonathan. I don't know if it's over Jonathan. And I'm like, hmm, is Jonathan pitting them two together, you know, against each other? I don't know. I don't know. But something that just wasn't adding up. It, was, it just wasn't adding up. But anyway, then we see Nia Lee, uh, Safari, uh, Cayenne, not the pepper, <laughs> discussing um, Jacque's accusations because Safari needs to know all what was said as he should. Um, do y'all remember the blogs? The blogs that was talking about um, at the time that he had got robbed. Like, the blogs, it was all over the blogs. Safari got robbed. You know, some people think it was a hoax, that it was set up, that it was, you know, falsely created. And if I'm correct, I do believe, Um, I remember reading somewhere where people was like, okay, Safari, you just got robbed. I mean, all his jewelry, everything he had, but then he was later seen, like, shortly after, 
wearing the same type of jewelry, like the same exact type of jewelry that was stolen from him. And folks were saying, ain't no way. He should be wearing the same exact jewelry after being robbed. Do y'all remember that? And they was like, unless he was lying about being robbed. So I don't know. I don't know. But um, Jaquay, you know, he had revealed this to Cayenne that he thinks Safari was scamming the insurance company. But I'm like, was he doing that bad? I mean, Safari is on every hip-hop show from New York to Cali. He can't be doing that bad where he, you know, frauding the insurance company over some jewelry. And then nine times out of ten, the people on these shows, they be borrowing (laughs) <laughs> they borrow the jewelry. They be borrowing them the cars. They be leasing those apartments. Half of them apartments don't even be theirs. <laughs> they don't even be theirs. They be renting them for the show. And after the show is over, they go back to their crib, wherever the heck that is. So I don't know. I don't know what to quite believe about that. But anywho, um, that is a felony. Yeah. <laughs> I do believe y'all y'all correct me if I'm wrong. I don't think that's a misdemeanor. I think that's a felony. So I really hope that he's not trying to, you know, run those scams on no insurance companies. <laughs> that would just be dumb. But um as far as Jaque, um, they had Safari, you know, he wanted to holler at him about that, about the accusations. So they showed up at his um event. Jaque, I guess he's been um working with the designer Sean John as a model, and he has his new clothing line out with Sean John. But I don't I don't know why they didn't show like more of the clothing line. So I'm gonna have to check that out online. Y'all let me know if y'all checked it out already and let me know, you know, how y'all feel about his clothing line. But um regardless of what clothes he was showing off that night, Safari when he got there, he wasn't for it. He wasn't for no clothes. He wasn't for no clothing line, no fashion show. Um, again, those allegations are serious that Cayenne was accusing Jaquel of saying, um, at first look, when Safari showed up, it seemed like he was really pissed, like really pissed off. But then it seemed like he was more hurt, more hurt. Like, you know, you my boy, you my guy, you my homie, you my dog. And you making those accusations that I'm committing fraud against the insurance company. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But then, but then. <laughs> um, then we saw Juju and Jonathan. Um, they made up. They they sat together. They hashed it out. Um, it seemed like they was just about to be on good terms again. But then He's still upset about how she handled the podcast situation. Like, okay, y'all remember, um, Juju had been accused of being fake, phony, secretive. And she got upset because Yandy and Jonathan was saying that about her. And Juju was like, I'm not fake. I'm not phony. Why would y'all say something like that? You know, I'm real. I'm 100. You know how everybody, I keep it a buck. Anyway, um... I can't say if she's fake and phony. And I again, I love me some Juju. But she did keep him out of the loop of the podcast meeting. Did she not? I mean, did she not? <laughs> she went all the way to Cali and didn't inform him of the meeting. Didn't hit him up. Didn't buy him a ticket. Didn't, you know, let him know about it at all. So, I don't know. I don't know. But... As far as um, back to Safari and Joe Button, um, y'all know how these OGs be out here in these streets. They do their crime. They do their time. They have babies all over the city. Um, they they just do everything under the sun that you shouldn't do. And then once they get a little older, you know, like grandpappy age, once they get a little older, then they want to try to school these young heads out here. And that's what Joe Button is trying to do. He's trying to play Papa Joe, you know, to Safari. 
He just cannot understand why Safari is always popping off on social media because that's what a lot of these young people do. They be on social media. They tell all their business. They be snitching. They be uh, making allegations against people. I mean, clout chasing. Clout chasing. <laughs> but in this case with Safari, you know, he was upset because Joe Button thought he was just making problems on social media again just just trying to get attention but safari was upset because folks aka nikki was in an interview and had allegedly i haven't seen the i haven't seen the interview but safari is making allegations that she was accusing him of stealing credit cards and having a fake hairline <laughs> I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Okay. Not only is he being accused of insurance fraud and scamming the insurance company, but now stealing credit cards too? And Nikki said it? Uh, and y'all know which Nikki I'm talking about. The ex. Y'all know who I'm talking about. But you know what? All I want to know, forget the credit card, forget the insurance fraud, I want to know, do you really have a fake hairline, Safari? Like, Joe was like, are you serious? You're going to go off on every person that lie on you? And this is this is something for all of us. People going to lie on us all the time. But you don't always have to react. But I think in this case, he felt he had to clap back because it was Nikki who has a huge following, like a huge following. And somebody that big make them kind of allegations against you. If you did just sit back, you know, people might think, you know what, well, it got to be true. It got to be true. And, you know, we don't, we personally don't know if it's true. But, you know, that's why he felt the need to clap back. And I probably would have too. I probably would have too. Especially... If somebody would have said, I had a fake lace front hairline. Like, huh? okay, I'm going to have to look that up. Is there such a thing as a fake lace front hairline? <laughs> I'm going to have to look that up. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, anyway. um, Did y'all see them guns on Kimbella when she was working out? She was punching the mess out of that punching bag. Can you say stressed? The girl is stressed. Um, her man Jules is facing a lot of time. Um, he took a plea deal, and she's still upset because she said he's not owning up to you know the drugs being the reason why he's always getting caught up in some mess, but. If I can recall, I do remember him saying, you know, that scene when he was in the airport and he had came in with his bags and suitcases and then he realized he had a gun in his bag. Like I, I told y'all before in like one of my previous uh, reviews, I'm going to give Jules the benefit of, that, of the doubt because you got to be the biggest fool on the face of the earth to think you can get away with putting a gun in your suitcase and it going through the security check. Um, those cameras that can darn near see your spine and see how many hairs you have on any part of your body. I mean, <laughs> you gotta be seriously dumb as heck to think you can get away with a gun. And then, okay, you looking at big time. You're looking at big time, like for real. Um, that's like terrorist kind of stuff, you know, trying to sneak guns into the air. Okay. Anywho, anywho, um, I give him the benefit of the doubt. But my thing is, like I said before, they've been together for umpteen years. And he's done, done everything from cheating, scheming, getting locked up, being addicted to drugs, and she is still there still right there so either shut up or leave like either stop nagging the man because he hasn't changed enough for you or leave you only got two choices two choices 
I mean, I really hate when females and some of y'all can y'all can attest to this. Y'all, y'all, I know y'all can feel me on this. Uh, when females be constantly, constantly complaining about their relationship to anybody who will listen, but they don't go nowhere. They ain't going nowhere. <laughs> they stand right there, letting the dude walk all over them. So again, I'm like, you got two choices, just two. Y'all see my fingers on Instagram and YouTube, just two. But anyway, anyway, back to uh. Nile and them, Nile and them. Um, Mariah Lynn, she meets up with Sin and Naya. You know, they out getting petties, having a little, you know, girl time and everything. And Mariah, she's about to have a new single release party for her single title, Done. And Sin, she's talking about, you know what? I think I want to get in a studio too, you know, and make some music and get creative and everything. Um, why do everybody? want to sing or rap like i don't know i don't know but anyway as far as sin i'm gonna give her a chance get out there show us what you got if you really think you you know you can make it get out there and show us what you got and we'll critique you on it you know we'll critique it critique i can't even talk critique critique you on it and give you our honest opinion <laughs> so go for it but how do y'all feel about joe button I thought what he did was just awful. When they show her the video that he posted of their home showing everybody, um, he showed like it was a mess. Like seeing she had wigs, you know, all over the place. She had shoes and clothes all over the place. Mind you, this is like the living room and the dining room, not the bedroom. Not the bedroom. One thing I got to say, anybody who's been over my house can tell you, anybody who's been on my house can tell you, and I have a lot of friends and family subscribe to my channel, uh, my living room, dining room, kitchen is the cleanest and the bathroom part of the house. Now, when you get to them kids' bedroom, as long as I can walk through and I ain't tripping over all kind of stuff and breaking my neck... I, I'm good. I'm good. It can't get too out of line, but you know, I'm good. You know, them as kids. But for somebody to come over your house and you got your clothes, your drawers, your socks, we talking about the living room and the dining room. And if that's how she do, okay. If he got a problem with it, I don't think he should have brought it to social media though, because that just makes her look so messy and so nasty. I mean, can you imagine the stuff that people was probably saying on the post? And no, I did not go to the post, so I don't know. You know, I don't know personally what they said, but um, he was trying to say basically, you know, she don't know how to keep a clean house. I don't know. That, I would have been so embarrassed. So embarrassed. I think he was really wrong for that. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about that. But when she brought it up to his attention, he was all nonchalant like, and so clean that shit up. <laughs> clean up sometimes. That's what he was telling her. Like, why are you mad? Clean up. But when she started trying to say, okay, she tried to use this excuse. That she doesn't have time to clean, just like he doesn't have time to have sex with her. Like, is she trying to punish him for keeping by keeping a dirty house because he doesn't want to have sex with her? Um, he even tried to hire a nanny. He told her, I will pay for a nanny. For you to have more time to do what you want. She can help out with the baby. You know, help out with chores. But she has yet, you know, to look into one. Instead, she just messes the house up. Don't clean up. And I'm like, okay. I ain't even gonna tell y'all. Y'all already know what usually happens. When women try to play that tit for tat with the cat. Do I really gotta say? Do I really gotta say? It usually don't end that well. <laughs> it usually do not end that well. Men do not play that game with women. When you try to keep the cat because they're doing something you don't want them to do, and you try, come on now, okay. Now, now hold on, hold on. Now, so let me, let me, some men probably will, 
some men they be like okay they're gonna bed and they're gonna beg and they don't try to figure it out and work it out but a lot of men you try to keep that from them because they did this that and the third they gonna find it somewhere else they gonna find it somewhere else but anywho anyway um when naya lee started revealing her story you know when they was getting their you know toes done and everything um when she started revealing her story about how she got attacked by a group of random women like this chick was like she got 36 stitches from behind her neck all the way around to the front of her chest that's how bad they cut her they try to cut her head off these was random women and i'm like i don't even remember that do y'all remember that i don't remember seeing that anywhere in the media but you know then again i don't follow naya lee but mariah lynn has started empathizing with her because neither of those two women you know felt like they were good enough um like a lot of troubled kids mariah she was bounced around from place to place her mom was and is still addicted to drugs her father has been in a pen um i'm beginning to think that a lot more celebrities you know should be out there in the world you know mentoring teens um like young adults uh you know young girls young boys because as i said before if you take the money away a lot of these folks lives are kind of worse off than us we could be making nine ten twelve dollars an hour and happy as all hell we at home our kids are fine you know we got food on the table the lights is on we got cable we got phone you know what i'm saying and some of them be rich as all get out got six seven eight figures and their whole life could just be falling apart money can't fix everything money can't fix everything so i think it should be a lot more celebrities out there mentoring you know that's just what i think that's just what i think but anywho anywho um then we saw mariah lynn you know she was on stage for her new single release party and i couldn't understand a darn thing that she was saying i, I, I even rewound it I, I she was rapping I couldn't understand what she was saying, but the whole party was lit. Everybody was rocking, grooving, vibing, you know, to her performance. So I take it she did, you know, pretty well. But then um, I had totally forgotten till they show like that uh, clip that her and Safari, you know, had some kind of romantic encounters in the past. But he claimed, you know, it was just a moment of weakness. But if y'all saw the clip. That didn't seem like no weakness for me. <laughs> that didn't seem like no weakness for me. That's an intentional. But um, anywho, anywho, um, he brought up you know the insurance fraud again, and Jaquay claimed you know there's no way I would never do that. You know this is me. This is me. I would never do that to you. I would never say anything like that. So then that leads me to wonder, Cayenne, not the pepper. <laughs> is she lying just because she's pissed off at quay for cheating on her that can't be the case because that would be real petty right that would be real real petty i mean serious allegations serious allegations um so i don't know i don't know but anywho you know i was really glad when jonathan and juju you know like i said they were able to hash things out but as far as that podcast that seems to still um uh, be an issue with them um he's just you know been in his feelings basically like like i said she left him out the loop you know when she had the meeting she went to cali she didn't notify him but she's like just let's forget about it you know you're my friend i just want to be friends just let this whole go if this is going to be you know the barrier between us and that's going to keep us from getting along then just let's forget about the podcast just let's forget about it but jonathan i say to you if your heart is still in that podcast go for it and maybe either do it by yourself sometimes you got to do things about just you, by yourself you know at least to get it started and then maybe bring somebody in if you can't find anybody to do it with you you know off top 
I'm just saying, you know, if that's something he really want to do, don't let that stop you. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying, sometimes thing, everything ain't for everybody. <laughs> and sometimes your closest friends, you can't pull them into everything that you do. Sometimes you got to let them watch from the sidelines, you know. That's just how it is. Just how it is. But then Yandy and Kim Bella, you know, they still got issues. Uh, Yandy pulled Kim, you know, to the side because whatever issue she has with Yandy, Yandy wants her to say it with her chest. Like, get it off your chest. But they ended up going back and forth, just back and forth, arguing, yelling, talking over each other like little children, not letting each other get a word in. I mean, I wish they would work it out because Kim, Kim is under a lot of pressure. She's stressed. She's depressed. Um, Her man, Jules, is about to be shipped off to prison. Yandy went through the same thing. She's still going through the same thing. But... Although she's trying to say she wants to be there for her and wants to be her support system, from what Kim is saying, Yandy isn't that good of a friend like she proclaims. And that, my friend, is something I've heard somebody else say before. But we shall see. He's going to be leaving soon, going upstate. So we shall see if Yandy's really going to be, be there for her. Because, again, I heard that Yandy be putting on this front on TV, like she's the best person in the world, you know, and I done heard before that she's not really a good friend, so I don't know, that's just what I heard, that's just what I heard, but and again, anyway, we shall see, so y'all let me know what y'all thought about these two episodes, I'm all caught up now, thank you, thank you, um, a lot of the shows that I have been doing reviews on, um, over the last few months, they are off air, you know, until next season. There isn't really a lot of shows going on right now that uh, I'm interested in reviewing. Besides, like, uh, Housewives of Atlanta, which came on tonight. So, I will be reviewing that. Not tomorrow. Because y'all know tomorrow I'm celebrating my birthday. And people are going to be celebrating New Year's, including me. It's going to be a New Year's birthday party, you know, shindig. So, we're going to be getting it in. Um, as far as, let's see, Wednesday is New Year's. I might do it on New Year's because I don't think I have, I might just be sitting around with the kids kicking it on New Year's. I don't know. I don't know. But I'll probably come at you with a live on New Year's Day on Wednesday with a review of Housewives of Atlanta. But also I want to make sure y'all, um, check that live that I did the other day. It was on, um, the Bird Box. That movie that everybody and their mama is talking about. That new Netflix, Apocalypse. I got to say this slow. Apocalyptic Thriller. <laughs> Y'all should have seen me on a live when I was doing a review. I'm like, Apocalyptic Thriller. Um, and starring, um, it was starring Sandra Bullock. And what was that black guy named? Travante Hughes, I believe. I think it was Travante. I know the first name is Travante, last name Hughes. Check that out. Um, A lot of people enjoyed that movie. Like, a lot of people enjoyed that movie. Um, I watched it because I wanted to see what all the hoopla was about. And so, y'all know, once a month, um, me and my good sister friend, we do what we call um, Sisters from Another Mister movie reviews segment so we do that like once a month and we pick a movie we watch it we review it together kind of like a cisco and eber thing like a back and forth kind of thing you know so check that out we did it a few days ago so it's on my channel uh, make sure you comment on that live too and let me know what you thought about the movie you might want to watch the movie first if you have it <laughs> but um and then check that out my live and you know comment and let me know what you thought about the movie and what rating would you give it we both gave it an eight me and samantha we both gave it an eight um we really thought it was different you know a lot different from some of the apocalyptic <laughs> movies that we're used to <laughs> so anyway y'all let me know and again let me know what y'all thought about these last two episodes of love and hip-hop new york and y'all know love and hip-hop miami starts in i think a week 
maybe a week or two. So first season of that, I wasn't really like, I don't know. The first season, I don't know. I hope this season be a little better, though. You know, because I like Trick Daddy. Um, I like Trina, you know. Um, but anywho, anywho, I hope it's a lot better than it was last season. But anyway, I'm going to let y'all go. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you for watching the live and joining me on Instagram and on YouTube. Hey, everybody on Instagram and on YouTube. Make sure y'all check out that live that I did on Bird Box. Okay? And those of you on Instagram, remember I have three YouTube channels and everybody else on YouTube too. Tanya Knows No Limit. Tanya's Primetime TV Media Reviews, and my Cake Decorating YouTube channel that I just recently started. Um, most of y'all know my business name is Tanya's Delights Slice by Slice. It's on Facebook, and now it's also on YouTube. But if you want to check out like all my pictures of all my cake art, from wedding cakes to cupcakes and everything in between, go to the Facebook page, Tanya's Delights Slice by Slice. But anyway, in the meantime and in between time, prime time squad, stay safe, be blessed. I'm going to repeat one more time. Stay safe. This is the weekend of the most drunk drivers everywhere. If you are out there driving and you go to a party, house party, like I I'm going to have a house party tomorrow night. And I'm going to make sure if they look like they can't drive, I'm calling you an Uber. We calling you a cab. Or you're going to stay your butt right there and stay at my house. I got a few couches. I got a lazy boy. Um, we got extra rooms. We got plenty of flow, plenty of covers. Do not risk your life or anybody else's just to try to get home to the comfort of your own home. Be safe. Be smart. Be blessed. Until we meet again, I'm out. Deuces.